We are back once again with Erica Brown, the publisher and editor of The Cricket, coming to us from her beautiful office in downtown Manchester by the Sea. Why do you always to my beautiful office? <laughs> Honestly, it's because I just see the, the plant, I see the plants and the flowers, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. I'll try to get a different perspective next time. That's How's nice. It? It's always nice. So it's look, look where I am. I'm in a, <laughs> like a utility closet. <laughs> yeah, but it's only temporary. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, from my last utility closet. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> miss right, well, I, Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're in the midst of the season now, right? We've got elections to the left and to the right of us. Uh, the way a big town meeting in Manchester. Let's talk about that right off the top. Yeah, we have a lot going on actually right now. It's spring is sprung. <laughs> um, yes, we had the annual town meeting in Manchester last week. It was Monday night. 310 people showed up. It was at the Manchester Memorial School in the what they call the Cafe Gymatorium, you know, that new kind of space. Yeah. Um, but they it's funny, they from the last several town meetings, they said they were loaded for bear and in a good way. The, the organiz, organizers set up for a huge crowd, 700. So 310 made the room look a little sparse, sort of, sort of. But it was still a very healthy showing. And then also, I should note, there was no tech snafus whatsoever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 310 so was, is confirmed. the relief of, of you know the folks at town hall and, and, yeah. and alan wilson it was it was really kind of smooth although uh, here's what it was it was kind of smooth went over 20 articles but it was you know nothing colorful particularly and it was kind of like just a you know a, a thing the only exception of that was kind of at the end at about you know like after 9 30 when everyone was a little punch drunk um, Sarah Philbrick from the planning board got up to present, and she's an ex US attorney and sort of very, I would call her kind of straight on, mm-hmm. let's just call her a straight on personality, right? Uh, she got up to introduce the adult entertainment bylaw. Okay, right. <laughs> and she had to explain that, you know, it's not that Manchester wants adult entertainment, it's that adult entertainment is protected by the US Constitution and therefore the fact that we don't have a bylaw on adult entertainment means that anything can go anywhere. So that's why the planning board was saying let's put this in the limited commercial district, it went smoothly. <laughs> but Just it was a case. little bit of levity, most of the business was money. And that's what happens with annual town meetings because you have the budget right so mm-hmm. you have to figure out money, 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 how it's spent and, you know, why it's spent and look at line items. So really, if there was drama, it was in that area, although there were a couple surprises, which I thought was interesting within that context. So it's a $40 million, but I mean, 40, yeah, $40 million budget, just over around, we're rounding numbers here, Corey. (laughs) And of that, they went through sort of all the staff and operations, which, and then the capital items. And between those two, if I remember, and I'm going to look at my notes, that was about, let's call that 20, 22 22 million of it was that the rest of it is like debt service the school the school district which we'll talk about but um everything went through pretty smoothly i mean there was kind of just really what i would call sort of small questions um you know about pulling out line items like uh you know why is um somebody asked why why is the why are the salaries jumping up in board of health the board of health department you know it was kind of dramatic it's doubled the salaries have doubled which is a reasonable question by the way because if anything doubles you should be looking at it but the board of health has like no budget anyway so the fact that it doubled its salaries is not really very meaningful however Um, Wendy Hansbury is our new, uh, Manchester hired a brand new health agent. It had never really had a, in my memory, never had a health agent before. So we actually have a professional manager now over at the Board of Health. That's the reason why. And then things like, you know, salaries of lifeguards and things like that, you know, um, those are going up because I guess, you know, just over minimum wage isn't cutting it, (laughs) isn't inspiring people to stay. But anyway, so that, that all that stuff was going on, you know, so there was that, but then the big kind of moments I would say have two things in common. And it's funny, I wrote about one of them and the other one I didn't write about. Um, I only referred to it slightly. The first one was with this idea of reserves. Should we use reserves for things? When should you use reserves for an expenditure versus not? That's been a theme for a while, and the school district has been floating this idea for quite a while. They've been examining this because they're looking at the Essex Elementary School project, which is going to be coming up. It's probably going to be something like, you know, $50 million or whatever it is. I don't know how much it's going to be, but that's what Memorial School was. So that's the only reason I'm bringing up that number. 
Um, but because of that, they're, they've been counseled by this kind of, you know, what I would, you know, I think it's kind of lock, lock Lord, you know, is their bond age, you know, counsel. <laughs> Sounds very she, she. Mm. Um, but anyway, they've been counseled that if they use their reserves, if you use your savings accounts to do things like build new fields, then um, you're going to take a hit on your credit, your standard and poor's bond rating, your credit rating. And if that happens, it's going to be, you're going to be spending more money on debt service later. So it's penny wise and pound foolish. Okay. So it's within that. Okay. That, that range. So two things came up. Number one, and I'll just keep talking about the school committee, even though it happened later in the meeting. School district budget had separated the two fields in Manchester. We have two turf fields. One of them is 20 years old. The other one is actually the other one's about the same. Um, and it's on Brook Street. We have Coach Field. And on Lincoln Street at the high school and the middle school, we have Highland Field, right? So those are actually getting to be very dangerous. They're kind of have these divots in them and the kids are tripping. It's it, like nobody thinks we shouldn't be replacing them. They're well past their life but it's how you pay for them so people were saying yeah you know the school district they need to use their reserves for that they got plenty of money for that why are they coming to us right or and or why are we using our reserves because that field actually is shared right between the town and the school district mm -hmm. so that actually came up and the surprise there was that a member of the school committee Anna Lynn mitchell she's the newest member she got up and surprised her fellow school committee members and said she, uh, she said, well, I wasn't there at the, the day they voted the budget. She kind of got a pass there, she get, or she gave herself a pass there. Um, but she said, if I had, I wouldn't have voted to, uh, uh, I would have voted to you go with reserves, spend it out of our savings. Isn't mm -hmm. that interesting? And yeah. she hadn't told anybody. That's where the surprise came up. But so that ended up, it ended up passing, but, um, but there was a healthy discussion that I would call philosophical. Now, the other thing that was sort of, and it was related to the fields, but it was from the Manchester side. Manchester had to give about $400,000 on this. This was a line item in article number five, which was a capital expenditures. So somebody brought it up and said, you know, oh, actually, this is how it happened. The select board got up because they were the ones who had backed this particular line item. And they said, we should be spending this money. Um, we should be using reserve. We, um, I, actually, wait a minute. I'm going to re rephrase this, okay? Mm -hmm. What I didn't tell you is that the school district before town meeting found, they found, okay, let's just say they found an extra $300,000 and they gave it back to the towns, right? There it is. Yep. It kind of, you know, because it's a big budget year for them and, and, and it's a lot to swallow for both towns. So they, they gave it back. Now, they didn't find it under the cushion and they weren't squirreling it away somewhere. What happened was... In March, they had their health insurance premiums actually came in because there's a t there's a time in the season when they do it, and it came in lower than expected. They were really psyched. The other thing that happened, and who knows what how this is because it all goes on behind closed doors, but also their teacher negotiations, their teachers union negotiations concluded, and they were able to find some money there. So who knows what, how that broke down? But they had money coming back to the towns. Hmm. Now here's I'm going to pick back up on my story. Now, the select board said well, we should take that money and we should put it into reserves. And instead, the finance committee was like the Anna Lynn Mitchell in this story. They stood up now without the surprise, though, there was no surprise. <laughs> they stood up and they said, no, we have a philosophical disagreement. That money should go back in the taxpayers' pockets. So oh. it's very interesting because it's an unusual experience to watch the finance committee not be in lockstep with the select board and, and vice versa. In the end, what happened was the finance committee kind of won that vote. And so what happened was um, that that is going to um, result in lowering ever so slightly by 1% the tax increase for the residents of Manchester. So, huh. so there you go. That's that was kind of a long story, but it was kind of colorful. It was kind of interesting. We had one guy who got up and he didn't do this on purpose. And all I don't want to call him out like he's a terrible human being, which is why I'm not going to use his name. But this one guy, the optics on it were hilarious. He gets up and he says, I want to take money, $150,000 out of the $250,000 budget for si uh, for sidewalks. So in other words, taking sidewalks and getting it down to hundred grand, right? And he said, I want to move it over to um, you know, storm repair because I live on Ocean Street, Ocean Street, and it's always getting washed out and, and, and we need more money for that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, 
<laughs> who got up but the parent of a, a child, an elementary school child who has a rare genetic disease and, and uses a wheelchair full time and goes to school and everything. And she got up and just all she needed to do was say, that's not a good idea. And everyone was like, no, <laughs> to the, guess what? The sidewalk budget is, is good. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, you know, so little things like that, but that happens. I mean, town meeting is a fun thing. You know, it's a, it's an experience and it's utterly unique in New England. <laughs> yeah, this is true. And speaking of uh, meetings, there's a special meeting uh, coming up in Essex for a big parcel of land. Yeah, exactly. Whenever there's um, a special issue that comes up, towns will have a special town meeting, which means, you know, um, not the annual town meeting, which is every spring. And then, you know, fall town meetings, while they're expected and regularly happen, those are technically special town meetings. But this is a, a special, special town meeting <laughs> um, because it's happening about a month before the annual town meeting for Essex. And what's happening is we've talked about this before because it's related to something that happened about a year ago or last year, I, last fall. I, I honestly forget the, the last time they voted about this. Um, there were two parcels of land that were both deed restricted on Apple Street and total, they, they total actually about 20 acres. Let's call it 20 acres, mm -hmm. but it's on either side of the street. Last year, the, P, the family that owns that property ended up um, with this deed restriction, um, it is the town has a right of first refusal to buy it, but they have a stop clock that happens when the property goes under agreement, there's 90 days to exercise um, a right of first refusal. And so last year, the town bought 11 acres that abutted on Apple Street that abutted a DPW, a town owned site. So it made a lot of sense because they could do a lot of things with that property, either enhance the DPW site or, or change the use or, or whatever. Apple Street is a very small little, you know, little street. It's a little country kind of windy street that happens to be the perfect cut through between two major roads in Essex, right? Yeah. So the residents there, they don't like people cutting through. It's actually quite dangerous if you try to do it pretty fast. So it's, it's whatever. So as the causeway has been kind of flooding, people have been looking more and more at Apple Street. Uh, particularly with things like they're raising Apple Street um, to make it a better emergency cut through for mm -hmm. things like fire and, and, and police, if the causeway is ever flooded, which is not doesn't happen a lot, but who knows in the future it's going to happen. Um, and now we're back to this property. The other property across the street just got put under agreement for $900,000. It's a nine acre parcel of land across the street from this land that they bought last year, the town bought. And this has a house on it. This is where the house is. So um, the builder is a local builder. They wanted to put in two. They want to renovate the house. They want to add another house and reserve the right maybe to have a third house, but no more than three on the nine acres. And the rest of the property, they promised that they would put it under a conservation restriction. So that's that. You guess which ones the neighborhood wants. <laughs> Yeah, so the, anyway, so the town for its part basically is like, listen, we're not lobbying for one way or the other. We're just going to put it on the ballot and let the voters decide because it's our obligation almost as fiduciaries to basically exercise that right or not exercise that right. It's as yeah. simple as that. Truth is, I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to go. It's the Monday the 10th at 730, I believe, at the Essex Elementary School, and I'm going to be there. And it's the only item on the, um, the warrant that night as well, so... All right. Big stuff indeed, Erica. Thanks for keeping on top of all this for us. We will see you this time next week. Hey, Corey. Thanks. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.